first up, I do want to hand this over to journalist and activist Susie Dawson. Thank you so much, Taylor, and I'm so pleased to be at this event. This project has been four months in the making and has involved some of the coolest people that I know. We've had over 20 staff working on a daily basis to bring to you what you're about to see tonight, which really is next generation technology and social media space. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about my journey and how I came to believing that a product like what you're about to see needed to exist. And I thought we'd just start off with some statistics. I'm sure I don't have to name my platform of choice for social media. You'll be very aware what that is. And you probably know that that platform made some official announcements last September about major changes to the core functionality of their program and the way that they deliver content. And I wanted to start by showing you some of my analytics from that program so that you can see what's been happening to my social media account over the last few months. Here are the analytics from my personal social media account. You'll see in August, I earned 5.13 million impressions, but more importantly, I had 3,300 mentions, people interacting with me on my account and having discussions with me. By September, immediately following the announcement about changes to core functionality, my reach had dropped to 2.7 million from 5.1 million. Yet I had more people having conversations with me than in the previous month. The following month, my reach dropped by another 1 million, meaning I was now down about 65% on my original reach. And yet I still had approximately the same amount of people engaging with my content and having conversations directly with me. It was around the September, October period that I decided that this was, situation was intolerable to me personally. And so I actually stopped posting on social media. And you'll see my posts went from 600 odd to less than 100. And the reason for that was because I had started to work on this project full time. I wanted to find a solution for everybody and I wanted to put an end to this interference and the censorship. And so thinking about big tech, I know it's a huge topic in the news at the moment. I know everybody is talking about it and everybody is screaming for a solution. And I've been putting a lot of thought into what is the nature of our relationship with the platforms that we engage in on a daily basis. And the conclusion I've come to is that we have been in an abusive relationship with big tech. Like all abusers, they lie to us, they gaslight us, they're meddling in our relationships, they use our reputation to hold us hostage, they exert discipline as if we are small children, they apply their punishments arbitrarily and disproportionately, and then they blame us for it, as if it's our fault. And like all abusers, they like to keep that abuse secret. Ending the abuse of us by the big tech platforms or even enjoying a temporary absence of that abuse is only the beginning of the solution to any abusive relationship. The healing doesn't really begin and we don't truly begin to enjoy life and realize our full potential until we are able to engage in a relationship that is the opposite. One that is trusting and loving and genuine and supportive and kind and understanding, a relationship that builds confidence. When I began the process of delivering this product, it was because I was outraged at what big tech was doing to me. It's one thing to take personal risks to be able to share vitally important information. That I could live with, but it's another thing entirely to take personal risks and then not be able to share that information. That is intolerable. Watching precisely that dynamic play out and worsen day by day, month by month, I became determined to create a solution. So I began to speak to other content creators about what Big Tech was doing to them. I discovered the suppression and manipulation was occurring across the board. 
And that made me even more outraged and even more determined to create a new platform for us all. A defining moment for me was when I began to talk to social media users who utilize different tech products than I do. These were people with little to no technical ability or IT experience from a different generation than me and differing geographical and demographic profiles and who have zero chance at creating new solutions for themselves. Yet they told me story after story about the way that the conduct of big tech was negatively impacting them in their IRL lives. This isn't just about the online world. One woman told me about how she had followed a real life friend of hers on a very large platform with 2 billion users that should remain nameless and had initially engaged with her friend's content only to stop seeing that content appearing on her timeline anymore. Because she didn't see it anymore, she stopped engaging with it. When she then saw her friend in person, her friend was frosty and hostile and standoffish with her, and she had no idea why. And then she realized her real life relationship was being damaged by interference from the tech monopolies. The things that the woman told me was so profound that I started taking notes. I actually recorded it word for word. And I'm gonna share with you what she said. She told me, users don't know what we're seeing, why, how, or who is controlling it. Well, as an activist and a journalist, investigating intelligence agencies and governments, I know who's controlling it, but regular users don't. And they don't necessarily even care who is controlling it. They just know that something bad is going on and that they feel really confused by it and upset. She said to me, they're not just changing what we consume, they're changing our relationships. She felt a real loss of control, an inability to control and influence her own relationships in her own life because there's this behemoth force that is intervening and, and impacting those relationships. She told me people's content isn't just disappearing, it's being replaced with something else. And just as she had talked about the impact on her of her friend being frosty and hostile to her because they had been forcefully separated by social media, this is exactly it. Her friend wasn't just disappearing from her feed or from her timeline. Her friend was being replaced with something else. She said, we're being fed content instead of choosing to access it. She felt infantilized and manipulated. And she said, and this one really hit home with me. She said, we're trying to create and maintain relationships with people we know and trust and someone else is meddling with that relationship. So I got in the back of my mind a niggling little thought that Julian Assange had been talking about this for a very long time. And I went back and looked through his historical tweets and I found over 30 tweets from Julian across 2016 and 2017, talking about exactly these problems and warning that they were going to get worse. Julian as ever was ahead of the times and he talked about the filterverse of one. He said, Twitter's increasing censorship points to the future. Each person will live in an undetectable filterverse of one. And that is exactly what has been happening to all of us. The big tech companies control the filterverse. You are in an invisible prison. And when you are trying to send information out to your friends and followers or they are trying to send information to you that is being interfered with by the big tech companies all info in or out is manipulated by them and then i stumbled across this tweet it was julian assange calling for the creation of an alternative and he said i am looking for a decentralized a cryptographic alternative to twitter Twitter's freedom of expression has been on an inexorable decline. It is enslaved to its US jurisdiction and politics. Although it is substantially better than Facebook, that is a very low standard indeed. 
Now, something that I don't think many of you would know about me, you know that I'm a journalist, you know that I'm an activist. Some of you know I stood in the general election in New Zealand in 2017. Um, but what not so many people know about me is that I'm also actually a software development manager. Uh, in my last day job in New Zealand, I mean, I've been in, I was in tech for 20 years, but in my last day job in New Zealand, I was leading a whole team of developers um, developing web to print products for major New Zealand universities, web portals and web services, designing them, working with developers to build them and then going to customer sites and delivering them. And so I decided that maybe rather than just through journalism and activism, there was another way for me to serve the public. And I realized that creating an alternative that people can truly trust in, that solves the problems of the social dilemma and recruiting the most talented and qualified people that I know all around the world to do that with me could serve the activist community and the independent media community far beyond what I have been doing just through my own articles or my own YouTube shows or whatever else I've been engaged in. And so I started to put a lot of time and effort into designing an alternative. And ultimately, what I came up with was PanQuake. Pan means all, all of us. And Quake is the huge impact and huge effect that we can all have when we are not being suppressed and when we are not being censored. And so that means that we right now have a unique opportunity together to break the filter verse, that filter verse of one that Julian talked about. We can smash that to pieces with Panquake. Panquake is going to free your ability to communicate with your friends and followers and their ability to communicate with you without any middleman, without any interference, without any manipulation. And in doing so, yes, you will get exponentially more reach, you will get exponentially more interaction, exponentially more amplification, but more importantly, it will stop your real life, real world relationships being interfered with. And it will put you back in control of your social life, whether that's online or offline. So Panquake is fundamentally a short messaging service that helps you to curate, collate, and communicate messages quickly and easily. We have built our own custom blockchain to save all of the public data that you choose to publish on our platform and to preserve records of the interactions that you have so that never again do you have to wonder whether the things you have done are being interfered with or manipulated. Panquake is about more though than just solving the problems of conventional tech. Panquake is chock full of groundbreaking next generation messaging solutions, tools that give you the ability to do things that you could not even dream of yet. And Panquake, because we don't want to serve corporations or governments, we don't want to serve advertisers, we want to serve you, we want to serve users, we want to serve people we care about, our friends, our family, our communities, across the globe. Panquake is a user-supported network. We are not looking for venture capital, we are not looking for commercial investment, we are not looking for page ranking services to reflect us favorably so that we can attract Wall Street bigwigs. We are simply a user-supported network serving our users. In doing so, we are going to redefine social media. Panquake is comprised of 14 ironclad solutions to major social media problems. It has four brand new powerful features, functionality that does not exist on any other social media platform in the world. You will be able to have trust and integrity in our platform via the transparency of the blockchain. You will have total ownership and control of your own data, a solid balance of privacy and transparency and the ability to earn cryptocurrency for your content. I will be talking a lot more in the future about our commercialization and monetization model 
and you will receive a lot more info about this. But for tonight, I'm just going to take you through some of the top level design features of and particulars of Panquake. So in terms of the 14 solutions, some of you will remember a few months ago, I was having uh, conversations on my uh, not to be mentioned name of most favored social media platform with people to find out what is it that's driving them nuts? What do they want fixed? So that I could work out how to solve those problems. And this is the feedback I got. I heard that people are sick of their page arbitrarily refreshing when they're trying to look at content, which forces them to lose the content they're looking at and to then be served with the content that the platform would instead prefer that they see. I heard that people are sick of being shadow banned and feeling like they're being forcibly made invisible. They're not seen or heard. They're sick of trends being manipulated. They're sick of arbitrary account suspensions, finding out one day, like I did actually just a few days ago, all of a sudden locked out of my account, had to call all my friends and say, hey, tell the world that I'm locked out of my account, please, so that I can get back in. Luckily for me, I had friends with big enough platforms that they were able to apply some pressure and free me and get me access to my account back. But many people around the world never regain access to their accounts. People are sick of non-linear timelines with content that's scrambled all out of order. They're sick of RTing and liking content only to discover they haven't RTed or liked that content according to the platform that should remain nameless. I can tell you that one of my best friends, Kim.com, has a pinned tweet that I have been retweeting and liking for five years. And no matter how many times I retweet and like it, my retweet and like is never, ever counted on that communication. People are sick of advertising. I get Chanel ads. Other people get ads that are far more embarrassing. I can tell you I've never bought anything from Chanel in my entire life. Yet there they are on my timeline on a daily basis. People are sick of their personal information being sold to corporations and, or worse, governments and security agencies. People are sick of being prostituted out for the privilege of having use of a platform that does all of these terrible things to them. They're sick of their personalization algorithms inferring what their interests are and tracking them through every browser tab they open, watching everything they read, seeing everything they log into. They're sick of the blue tick bias, which is increasingly becoming a problem, where the platforms decide who they will consider verified and who they won't. I stood for the Prime Ministership of New Zealand, leading a registered political party, and I still wasn't able to get verified. Julian Assange wasn't able to get verified, and yet a fake Julian Assange account had a verification tick. So we need a system that allows us to self-verify rather than verification being some privilege granted to us by a platform that may or may not like what we are doing. People are sick of suggested follows. I get told to follow the NSA, the CIA, and the FBI. Literally, their official accounts put on my social media page and me being told to follow them. Of cross-platform links being discriminated against, of top tweets not actually being the top tweets, but just some tweet that got 20 retweets by a blue tick when there are tweets with thousands of retweets that would never make it onto the top tweet page and disappearing follows, finding that people they care about have been unfollowed from them and the people who care about them being unfollowed as well. So coming to the brand new functionality, these are the, the solutions that I designed that really, for me, I was thinking, what could social media platforms give us that they don't? Like, what have they been restricting from us all of this time? And that was when I started to think about curation. I'm constantly sending people like Caitlin Johnston and Jimmy Dore links to my tweets because I'm scared they won't see them otherwise. And sometimes I wonder, are they getting constant push notifications from me? Are they feeling harassed by me? And so I thought, how about we design a piece of functionality that will allow us to stack messages from different people and from ourselves on certain topics into a single link so that I can go, okay, I love this tweet by Jimmy, this tweet by Caitlin. Here's a couple of my tweets that are relevant. Here's some things I found on a hashtag. Click, 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 just to select them as simple as clicking the messages, hit one button, get a link, send it to Caitlin, send it to Jimmy and have them able to see in a single page view these uh, messages that I've curated for them that I believe will be interesting to them. 
from a functionality, from a design and development perspective, it's a very simple thing to do. And yet for some reason, we've never been able to do it. So this is for us what a pan quake is. A pan quake is where you take quakes, which are our versions of tweets that you like and care about and you believe your friends and family will like and care about and you stack them into a single link that you can share on platform or off platform at any time. Thunderquakes. We don't want thunderquakes just to be something that we earn for ourselves. We want it to be something that we give to other people. We want to earn things and gift them to the people that we love. So on Panquake, you earn Thunderquake points. You can gift those Thunderquake points to accounts who you want to help to be able to more effectively spread their message to a wider audience. Then when that Thunderquake message is scheduled, it copies to all of the uh, notification tabs of all the followers of that account. Those followers can then decide to either commit to participating in the Thunderquake or not. And then when the thunderquake is ready to go off, then all of the people who have opted in to supporting that message will automatically have the thunderquake copy to their timeline, regardless of whether they're online or offline. And in the spirit of wanting to circulate more feel-good feelings, so to, to get better relations, foster better relationships between people and panquake, we invented cupquakes. Cupquakes are something that every user gets once per day. And they are encouraged to find the accounts that they think are sharing the most important, significant messages and to, in one click, gift them a cupquake. Doing so will then post a special message promoting that account onto your user timeline and notify the person who you've chosen to promote that you have expended your daily cupquake on them. So who knows, maybe they'll then expend their daily cupquake on you. And love quakes are possibly the most powerful new functionality that we've come up with. I know from other people, that other content creators that I work with, that they spend hours per day just manually retweeting, manually sharing content from timelines that they follow and care about. Well, from now on with Panquake, you can love Quake an account that you trust and 100% of that content will share to your timeline automatically without you manually having to click or browse anything. And that will happen again, whether you're online or offline. So what Panquake does is allow you to be an active social media user and participant, even if you are not at your device. And it will save hours of time per day for active social media users. So in terms of Panquake design, there are some pretty basic principles from a design perspective about how we have built this program. And that is that we want every single aspect of the design to be about making things better for the user, not better for advertisers, not better for us as a company, better for the users and the user experience. So one of the things that always frustrated me about my platform of choice is I constantly have to have a million tabs open because I can't stand the having to navigate forward and back all the time. There's constant extra page views and extra clicks and all of the workflows that are really time consuming to navigate. And I found out why that is. Apparently, it's because the more page views and the more clicks, the more engagement and the higher the platform is reported to be in the page ranking services, which are then used to secure commercial investment into the company. So us not needing to have commercial investment means that we don't need to stick extra page views and page clicks or page loads in your workflows. You can have dramatically less clicks. You can see everything on one screen. You don't have to have multiple tabs open and we can serve you your content in a fraction of the time that the big tech platforms do because we don't need to falsely inflate the amount of time that you use our platform so that we can impress investors. So we've got really, really light workflows and a bigger accessibility focus. Um, but even more like special, in my opinion, is that we've built the user interface to be totally drag and drop. So 
where you see your user profiles and where you see your timeline and where you see site statistics and cool functions, where you see your Thunderquake meter, where you see your message box to write your messages, you can drag them around to any position on the screen that you prefer. You can customize the entire workspace. And all of those things sit in a single view dashboard that's updated by dynamic content, which means if I go and look at a quake by Caitlin Johnston, her profile details show up in the profile box. If I go back and look at my own timeline, my profile details show up in the profile box without having to browse to a separate page, without having to rescreen or wait for loading times. All of the content on Panquake is dynamic, which makes it fast. So having an amazing product and great functionality is obviously really important, but more important to me from an integrity perspective is who we are as a company. Who, who is it that's behind Panquake and what are, what are our ethics? The core problem, as far as I can tell, is that the user has been made the product and the corporations have become the customer of social media companies. Well, we have to change that. We have to make the user the customer and then serve our users. So in our architecture, we designed it, our platform, so that we cannot sell your data to anybody. Why? Because we don't collect your data. We don't have centralized servers. We don't retain any information about our users, not email addresses, not mobile phone numbers, nothing. By constitution, we're committing that we will not sell our company. We are not flipping pancakes. And architecturally, we really can't sell anyway because we don't have anything to give a customer or, or to give a, a, a purchaser if they want to buy our company. Why? because our network exists only on the devices of our users. So you collectively are Panquake. Of course, this means that as a user supported network, we, because we're not taking money from governments or corporations, will have a small, modest flat fee for all users in order to access our full functionality set. But that is why that is what enables us to build our entire product and to model our entire company to be in your benefit, to save you time and to give you power and social reach and amplification tools that no other platform can. Um, I won't go through all of the <laughs> various elements of the program tonight. Obviously, it's been four months in development already and is at a fairly a relatively advanced stage in terms of documentation, all of our architecture and design uh, planning and document documentation is done. As you'll see later, our systems are already um, configured. We have people working on the build as we speak. Um, so there will be a constant stream of new information coming out to you about Panquake in the coming weeks. So I won't get too much further into it tonight other than to say we will be holding a second stream next week, Saturday, 23rd of January. And given the technical issues we had trying to get our first stream out to you um, tonight, we will likely pre-record and then release that stream. But that stream will be a full-blown tech stream. We will be talking software licensing. We will be talking architectural models. We'll be talking blockchain processes, consensus algorithms. We will be giving you the confidence that we know exactly what we're doing from a technical perspective around how to build and implement and successfully roll out and deliver this product. Thereafter, I intend to, just as I would in my commercial life, uh, show up at client site, which for us here is me in video form, delivering to you all every single month the updates about the build progress of Panquake. So that leads me to next steps. What are the next steps? The next steps are when this stream is uploaded and by the time you are viewing it, you will see a whole suite of public Panquake social media account information to you about this platform. You can and should right now visit panquake.com. When you get to panquake.com, this is what you will see. There are three easy steps for joining the panquake.com community. And I will just share screen and show you right now. 
Pan Quaker is asking three simple things of you. One, that you donate now to express your interest in Pan Quake. And when you click that link, you will go to our Go Get Funding page. We would love it if you would leave a nice supportive comment for us in the comment section. There is a little bit more information here about precisely where we're at with our build progress and who the public endorsers are that have thrown their full weight behind supporting this pr product and who will be advocating for us in the public space. I've also got a little bit of information here for you about all of the different people who are currently working to make Panquake a reality. These are the roles that have been filled and these people have been absolutely working their butts off to bring this solution to us all. Once you've donated, there will be a link in the thank you screen at the end of the donation process, which will provide you with a 12 word passphrase. That passphrase you should screenshot or copy or write down on a piece of paper. If you're super clever about this stuff, that actually is the most secure way to do it. That 12 word passphrase is going to get you early access to our platform once we have delivered our beta solution. And then step three, of course, is to tell everybody you know, your friends and family about Panquake. Tell them that something different is coming to the space. Tell them that finally users are gonna be the customers, that users are gonna own their own data, that users are gonna have the ability to spread their content far and wide in ways they've never been able to do before. If you help us to spread the word, if you donate to help us complete the build, we truly are going to redefine social media. We're going to change this industry from, from an industry that is predatory in its practices and that violates your rights on a daily basis under the guise of you being willing to use their platform. You're going to instead have a space that you can trust, that you can prove that no manipulation is occurring and where you can build a following that you know can't be taken from you by malicious forces. And in doing that, we will free ourselves from the filterverse of one. We will break the isolation. We will be seen, we will be heard, and we will realize Julian's dream of a decentralized and cryptographic alternative to the existing big tech filterverse. Thank you so much. I'm gonna hand back to Taylor Hudak for now. And I hope you have a great time seeing all the amazing guests that we have for you tonight. I'll see you soon. Thank you.